Joey CISD, I'm Mark Cavazos, your superintendent of schools. Joining me today are the top 10 students from Harlington School of Health Professions. Their placement on the top 10 represents their hard work throughout these past four years and their dedication to reaching the goals they've set for themselves. We brought them here together to showcase their achievements as they share their experiences in our schools and to provide some words of wisdom to our future graduates. To begin, I'd like to go around the room and ask the students to introduce themselves, name all HCISD campuses they've attended, and share their plans after high school graduation, and we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Brittany Garza, and I have attended Treasure Hills Elementary, Coakley Middle School, and now I'll be graduating from Harlingen School of Health Professions. After high school, I plan to attend UT Austin, and I'll be majoring in Plan 2 Honors with a specialization in psychology. So you're going to the university, yes. all right? So <laughs> UT. Yes. Hi, my name is Matthew Garcia. I attended Rodriguez Elementary, Gutierrez Middle School, and I'll be graduating from HSHP. And after graduation, I plan to attend Harvard University, where I will concentrate in human developmental and regenerative biology, with a secondary in migration, ethnicity, and minority rights. Congratulations, super proud. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Magno. I've attended the Harlingen School of Health Professions, and for college, I'm going to the University of Texas in Austin as a liberal arts honors student, and I'm majoring in rhetoric and writing. Awesome, awesome. My name is Erin Castillo, and I've only attended the Harlingen School of Health Professions. I plan on going to Brown University as part of the program in liberal med medical education, so I have dual acceptance to both Brown and their medical school and I plan on specializing in an independent concentration in global health. Super proud, congratulations to you. My name is Morgan Johnson. I attended the Harlingen School of Health Professions and I will be going to UT Austin to major in public health. Are you all gonna to stay together? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hi, my name is Angela Flores. I've only attended the Harlingen School of Health Professions and after I, will, I plan on attending the Texas State University and majoring in nursing. Congratulations to you. Hello, I am Marco Martinez. I have attended Dr. Rodriguez Hello, Elementary. Hello, Marco. <laughs> 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 I like your Middle voice, school. Marco. <laughs> <laughs> and Gutierrez Middle School. And after graduation, I plan to attend the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley as an honor student and majoring in biomedical sciences. Congratulations, Marco. Hi, I'm Teresa Mbon. I've attended Treasure Hills Elementary, Lee H. Means Elementary, Vernon Middle School, and I will be graduating at the Harlingen School of Health Professions. For college, I'll be going to Texas A&M University Corpus Christi as an honors student, and I will be majoring in, in nursing. Super nice, congratulations. Hi, my name is Montrell Johnson. I've attended Long Elementary Memorial Middle School, and I will be attending the Harlingen, will be graduating from the Harlingen <laughs> School of Health Profession, uh, planning to go to UT Austin and major in biology. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Brianna McLean. I attended Memorial Middle School and the Harlingen School of Health Professions. And in the fall, I will be attending Texas A&M University College Station. I will be a university honor student majoring in molecular and cell biology. Congratulations, and Aggie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with some other questions, OK? So we realize that being on the top 10, you all are very accomplished in academics. Can you share with us what other activities you have been involved in throughout your high school years? <coughs> this is for anyone that wants to start. So I, <laughs> at, at heart, everybody looked at you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a musician, and with the teaching that I've gotten from the Harlingen School District, I've been selected as a member of Carnegie Hall's National Youth Orchestra. And with that, every summer I have toured, uh, gotten to tour to South America, to Asia, and this summer to Europe. And in addition, uh, as part of the Bezos Scholarship Program, I attended Aspen, Colorado, and learned how to make community change programs uh, and bring it down here to the Rio Grande Valley. And I founded the South Texas Higher Education Festival uh, to catalyze our educational potential and to provide a way for our students to prepare for college. Well, congratulations. Now you know why they selected you at Harvard. Yeah, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Other activities outside of just Hi. activities? Yeah. Yes. So apart from academics, I also compete in HOSA Future Health Professionals with my partner Erin, and we compete in health career display, and we actually qualified to compete at the international level in Orlando, Florida this coming summer, so those are our plans. And apart from HOSA and like school and academics and all that, I also do a lot of audio and video, 
And so at my school, I took the class last year and I really enjoyed it. So that kind of carried on to my senior year. And some of my work was actually featured at the seventh annual Student Film Awards. And so that was a lot of fun. And I also get to help people like Aaron with some of his video needs. And then Matthew, I've helped you with some <laughs> Bezos Scholar. Thank you. Yes, commercials <laughs> as well. So it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy making videos apart from school and whatnot. So. And that's so important, right? Yes. To have a balance of academics Definitely. and other activities. Congratulations, Thank you. Jane. So she pointed you out. Are you uh, okay? Yes. <laughs> so, um, I'm also involved in HOSA. I mean, many of us are. It's the mm -hmm. biggest club at our campus. But um, I've been able to serve as the vice president for the Rio Grande Valley and for the state of Texas. I'm now running to be an international officer, so for the entire world. Um, but HOST has been a really big part of forming who we are and what our life has been at the Harlington School of Health Professions and being able you know, to compete and then serve as an officer. It's been really great and really shaped what my high school experience has been like. Well, we'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the way it works. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Marco. Uh, this senior year, I had the honor and privilege of serving as Student Council Vice President along Jackie, who is Student Council President, and I've also served as National Honor Society President alongside Montreux, and um, I've also competed in HOSA, and this year I went to state for a public service announcement with my friend Therese, and, <laughs> <laughs> and in the past I've also competed at Student Film Awards and have won an award, and I've also had other uh, officerships in Spanish Club. Wow, that's awesome. So did. She was your friend after you won or before you won? <laughs> uh, can't tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else want to share their outside activities? Yes. I'm a part of the Big Red Cardinal Band. I'm in the Color Guard. And in the winter season, we I compete in Winter Guard. And I've definitely seen a lot of change in the program, so I'm very proud of that, like how far we've come. And in addition to that, I'm also a part of HOSA, and I also qualified for to go to the international level in pharmacology. That's awesome. And so what's unique here is you're in a specialty high school, but you're also participating at the Carnal Band. So that's awesome. So here's your next question. How have these extracurricular activities shaped who you are today? What have you learned from your various activities? Um, I'll, I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, while I haven't done anything as specifically amazing as like starting my whole uh, organization or or going to the international level level for hosa but you're sitting next to them <laughs> yes. right. i i have um, divided my time amongst a lot of different organizations such as like student council or class council um, red cross stuff like that and i feel like it has shaped me by proving that i can balance um, my academic workload with things outside of school and it makes me um, makes me happy for like the future because I do want to be a doctor, and I know that it's very difficult to balance like a home life and your work life, and it makes me confident that I can do it and that I can have other hobbies and things outside of my job, and so so it makes me confident in my own abilities that I can do that and. And in what, the future. And what a great thing to learn at a young age, right? So yes. you're involved with the American Red Cross? Yes, I am. We we would go to like the, the chapter that they have here and we would help make packets of like information um, for natural disasters and stuff like that. We've also been to to um, sessions up in, in Houston and it tells it gives us information on how to make our school better and help us um, branch out into the community and help our community as, in as much ways as possible. Well, thank so. you for serving in that. That's of awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Who else? What have you learned from your extracurricular? <laughs> Other than you helped him with video. <laughs> 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 Over there, that's important. Yes. One thing that I did learn from my student council president position is that or at least something that I've learned is that there are so many different types of personalities at our school and not only do I get to interact with the seniors for student council but I really get to govern and guide all of the people from our school which is 8th grade to 12th grade and so in doing that I've got to meet so many amazing people who are very individualized as in they have their specific like strengths and weaknesses and so when it comes to like allocating specific tasks for instance we had our homecoming dance and so I'd be like if you're very talkative then you can go out during lunch and try and advertise or if you're very artistic you can help with our decorations and whatnot and so something that I think I've really learned from my presidency is that I need to really get to know everyone and then see like what their specific talents are and then see how they can bring those talents to the betterment of like our school or, or our homecoming dance. And that's going to serve you very well. 
throughout you. your life to understand that people have different personalities, they have different skill set, but they're all willing and able to help. And so that's a great lesson to learn in high school. Anyone else? Yes, I think one thing that I wanted to mention was, and then a lot of my activities, it was very outside of the valley and you know, different countries or different areas of, the, of our country. And one of the things that I noticed was that even when I was among some of you know, the best, most influential people in the world, is that people from the Rio Grande Valley can have that same place next to them. That if you work just as hard, we're just as deserving of any opportunity, and that just because of where you come from or uh, your socioeconomic background has no impact on that. And that has really encouraged me to look past any potential barriers and say, I can do anything if I really wow. can. Wow, well, that's amazing. That's a great, mm -hmm. complex way of looking at the, at the world because it's within your reach, right? As you just gotta do your part and so. How about in the back row? What have you learned from your extracurriculars, Aggie? <laughs> from being in the Big Red Cardinal Band, I learned a lot about teamwork and dedication because that's a big team, it's right? It's <laughs> it's absolutely it's like the entire formation. So I learned that everybody kind of has to pick up their slack, and if somebody's not, somebody else has to step in, kind of give them a pep talk and see what's going wrong. But also, I learned that there's a lot of dedication and time that goes into putting on such a big show because it, there are a lot of long hours and a lot of sweat and tears that go into the show, but the final product is always very rewarding to see. And I learned that in order to get to there, there's a lot of hard work. That and you to. all did an incredible job going from, what was it, 10, 10 to 5? To to that, that's incredible. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> and I think you all went back and regrouped and said, we got to leave it all on the field. And yes. so that, that was amazing. Congratulations, yeah. you all made it to state. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, OK. Yes, well, for me, from these activities, I learned what I was passionate about. So for example, for the past three years, I've competed in nutrition on the state level for HOSA. Four years ago, I never would have guessed that I was so interested in it. And that now that's something that I want to study in the future. Is there a big competition in the nutrition space uh, I'd it? say so, in wow. Texas. <laughs> and, and, did, and did you enjoy it? What did you learn the most in that competition? Uh, that I need to start, stop eating sugar. Oh, <laughs> oh don't tell me that. <laughs> so you learned a lot, and it's, right. it's guided your work. Good, good. Marco, you were going to say? Yes, sir. I think that anyone who has hold, held an officer position can agree that it can be difficult at times, especially when um, collaborating with others. Not so much of the other fellow officers, but more so when you're addressing a crowd of members because not everybody is going to agree with you or the way the club is ran or the organization is ran. So I think from these experiences this year, it taught me how to interact with others and it'll come in handy when interacting with others in the medical field in the future. Well, here, here's what's important and it's a common theme in everybody that has spoken, is that there's very little things that you do alone. Mm. that you're always involved with other people and it takes a whole group and collaboration, communicating, thinking critically, being creative. All those skills are going to serve you well as you move on to the next chapter. And, and you know, those are skills that sometimes kids don't learn and then they get to college and then they have a big struggle. So, so those, are, those are critical that you stay focused on that. So imagine, uh, we probably, I probably have about 3,000 employees in the Harlingen Public Schools and, and about almost 18,700 students. So you know, there's a lot of people, right? And so, and so just keep in mind that these experiences are gonna take you a long way. And so thank you for being involved. So let's go to the next question. And this one's gonna be a little surprising. Your top 10 billboard <laughs> went up. Describe the moment you first saw the billboard. You were already laughing? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't realize the picture was going to be that, like that, no. right? Well, hey, hold on, I'm not finished with the question. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> describe the moment you first saw the billboard. What went through your mind? Well, the, the first thing that went through my mind was that my face looked really big. <laughs> that's why I was well, laughing. Well, that's why it's called a billboard. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was so proud of all of us, not just seeing myself up there, but seeing all of us because we pride ourselves in being such as like um, a tight knit community, especially in the top 10. We've never been one to tear each other down to get ahead. We've always helped each other. What can I help you with here? Do you need help with this homework or this? Um, so it was just so like 
really nice and um, fulfilling that to see all of our faces up there. So, so, so when you saw it, you said, I'm done. I don't have to do any more work. It's already <laughs> no, no. So yeah. it, it made me think that I had completed one chapter of my life, but it opened the doors for something um, much bigger. And and I'll keep moving forward and taking that um, that pride with me into the next step. Did you step. try to take a selfie? Oh, yes, I did. You did? <laughs> oh, okay. So awesome. I took a lot of mom <laughs> selfies. <laughs> Uh, well, for me, it provided me with a sense of relief because I could, I was able to finally see my hard work pay off. And um, like Brittany mentioned, that we're all here to help each other. And that's what I really enjoyed about seeing that billboard up there was uh, the trueness of our friendship and how we were finally able to reach a milestone in our life. And that's so well said. Now, was it a goal when you became a high school student or did you think of, I want to be on the billboard back when you were in elementary or middle school? Well, yeah. I didn't know that they did billboards, so I until just- Until you saw it. it. <laughs> no, not until I saw it, like, <laughs> a few weeks before. Um, no, um, I knew I needed to stay in top 10, and I just um, was able to maintain like grades while be, being able to manage very, various responsibilities, such as work, extracurricular activities. And the billboard, it was just, uh, like I said, uh, watching my hard work pay off. Uh, it's a culminating event. Others, what did you think when you saw it? Well, this isn't so profound, but <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the billboard, I was like, wow, everybody's skin looks so good. Yes. <laughs> really airbrushed. It's a great nice. job, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is normally. Right. <laughs> so did your family go out there, or did, um, did people call by. you and say, it's up? <laughs> who, who, how did you all find out it was up? It was really funny. Well, I actually first found out, I think Marco's mom <laughs> sent a picture and I was sending it out to everyone. I was like, oh my goodness, it's up. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was really funny because the road on the billboard, so here's like the billboard and we're going down the road, but you have to kind of turn around to see it. And so it's like oh, no, me right. and my mom and my brother, and we're all turning around, we're all like screaming, right? <laughs> because we <laughs> see her face. But then we're like, oh my gosh, we have to focus on the road, right? <laughs> but it was really nice because I didn't personally take a picture with, with it at first because I had an AP test that morning and so I was a little like haggard. But <laughs> my, my mom and my brother both took like selfies with the billboard and then my dad on his own accord took another photo with the billboard and they were wow. like comparing it. But it's funny because they hadn't talked about it before. It was just kind of something that we noticed that we, that we both did when we got home. And so that was really funny. And it shows that, or at least like I'm really, glad that I have like a family that really supports and is really like all for like things like this billboard and this interview and whatnot because they're very supportive and they're my family is like my biggest cheerleaders and so it was just a really good celebration of all of the work that not only I have put in but like my family as well because they support me. So it was end. a sense of pride for the right. whole family not yeah. just yourself. Mm -hmm. Super nice. It's nice. Somebody was going to say something. Well, for me, it was definitely a goal since I was like in kindergarten. Was <laughs> it? Did your mom take you to the billboard and say, I want you up? Well, no? no, I would just see them and I was like, Mom, why are their faces up there? And she's like, Oh, they're in top 10. And I was like, I'm going to be in top 10. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, you made it a goal. Okay. So we were AP testing and then Marco showed us all the picture and I immediately called my mom and told her mother, Go take a picture with me, please. <laughs> so it was definitely, I was very excited about it. Wow. And so you still remember you set a long time yes. goal. Wow, that's awesome. Um, okay. So when I first saw the billboard, I was Did Marco excited. send you a text too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Um, it was actually my mom's birthday. We were celebrating her birthday Aww. and she passed by because she wanted to see it and she was so very proud. And I was so proud to make her proud. So you didn't have to buy a gift, right? I mean, you just gave her <laughs> yeah. she gave her all the <laughs> Congratulations. It sounds like it's a family thing. Who else was going to say over here? Um, okay, well, first, I was an emotional mess. <laughs> I, I was, but it was tears of joy after, uh, I don't know, it's just seeing your face up there. It's so, you get a sense of accomplishment, um, especially because we've all worked so hard to be up there, as well as those late nights um, and those caffeine runs. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm very proud of all of us. Super nice. Marco. 
So yes, as everyone mentioned, I found out about the billboard. <laughs> <laughs> I got a text message from my mom, and she sent about like ten pictures of the same thing. <laughs> which, uh, and you I were was, like, "Mom, one." <laughs> yeah. But it shows how uh, excited she was to see me up there, and I did tell her at the beginning of my freshman year that I wanted to be up there. So I was proud of myself, and I was happy that my mother was proud of me because that's all I strive for. But I was also appreciative of the editors taking off my acne <laughs> because that day was really bad. So I appreciated the effort that they went through to take it off. So, so they do a lot of work on my pictures too. So don't forget. <laughs> you were going to say it. Um, so yeah, I was like Jackie. I was driving by myself, and I didn't realize how big it was going to be when I drove past it. And there's a junction that splits into two, and I swerved, right. and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, was <laughs> but um, it was definitely a sense of pride. And like Brittany said, we. Unlike my most high schoolers in the district, we've been together since the eighth grade. Yeah. So it's not four years, it's not three years, but it's five. Five years. Mm -hmm. So we've really become to be a family who've really known each other. I mean, we, this top ten has pretty much been the top ten since the eighth grade. So uh, <laughs> it hasn't really switched. And it's just been really great to see all of our hard work pay off. And a lot of our teachers would always say, I don't get it. You guys are competing against each other, but you help each other yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Because it was yeah. like, well, if I didn't understand a homework problem, I went to Brittany because I wasn't sure what I needed to do. Right. But it's just really that sense of community we formed at our So it, it became a family. You mm -hmm. all became yeah, a family. Sure. Now, did anybody get a text from people that you hadn't talked to in a long time and they said, I didn't know you were that smart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did? Red, big red particle that they did? Yes. And you were like, <laughs> I was like, well, I just... You, you said I am. I was like, yeah, I am. And they were like, so why are you on the corner? And I was like, because I'm number six. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so did anybody else get a text? You did? Well, not necessarily a text, but um, I'm really fortunate to have gone to Harlingen Medical Center for my practicum sites. And I formed really close bonds with the people in the respiratory department. And so I told them that I would be on a billboard and I told them where they was. And then I told them where the billboard was. And then what happened was that I saw them again later on because I think we went to like one of the community events there at HMC, we were volunteering. And then some of the respiratory people came down and they were like, oh my gosh, we saw you on the billboard. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's amazing to see like, it's amazing to see that I have been able to form these bonds with like our community partners and the people who have really helped me with um, Things like communicating with like professionals and whatnot, they were really helpful, the people at the respiratory department. And they were like, we almost didn't recognize you because, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, what, what that tells us is that the whole community wants the kids to succeed, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have a lot of support throughout the community. So that's great. And so you prove somebody, and you know, the person that maybe didn't want to take you to the prom, now you say, hey, <laughs> look over there. Yeah, okay, so let's move on to the next question. So. If you could, what would you do different during your journey in high school? Is there anything that you would do different? I would um, push myself harder because there's always room for improvement. And I feel like if I would, um, would have done things different in my study habits, I would have gotten that 100 on that test, I got a 70 on, or uh, just understand the material better for myself so it could help me out in the long run. So that's one of the things you'd be doing different. Well, you get to start over in college. So <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. I think contrastingly, I would tell myself to relax. Um, throughout <laughs> high school, it's always been like a push to stress myself out and do the best I could possibly can. If like it was getting a 98 instead of 100, it was like, well, what question did I miss to miss those two points? <laughs> Um, the teachers would run in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> really good. What, what you and just taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, realizing that this one grade isn't going to kill me, but that it's going to help me learn from my mistakes and then move forward. Good yes. job. Good job. Anyone else? Yes. Going off of what Aaron said, I think I have learned, this is something that I've learned and also something that I wish I could do differently, is that to, for one, relax, but also sort of say no to more things because I have that I have that like inner feeling that I need to help every single person out no matter what no matter like how big or how small the task and I feel like I'm getting progressively more selective with what I'm doing because again it's better for again like how I treat myself as well because I feel like if I do pile on too many things I do get overwhelmed easily and so I feel like in college, whenever I go, I'm going to be a lot more selective with what I dedicate my time towards. So I can be um, not only better at that one thing, but I also think just a lot less stressed out. Still working hard, but well, the the good news out. is that as you get older, you t 
tend to focus on what really interests you, right? And so in high school, sometimes you want to do a lot because you just want to find yourself and find the interest. So great, great uh, perspective is kind of focus on what you really like and, and your interests. So anyone else? You would do something different? I, <laughs> I would say I'm a mixture between Montreal and Aron. I could have improved my study habits a lot more, and I'm definitely going to have to work on that for college. Um, but I would get upset if I got a 95, but I know I didn't study as much as I could have. And then I, I would, too, be like, why didn't I get the five points? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think it's, it's uh, I have to put it on myself that I need to improve my study habits. And I, like Montreal was saying, you can always improve upon yourself. Mm -hmm. so, so are you a procrastinator or not really? I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you have, you have procrastinator? For, you for are? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just wait till the last minute yeah. type thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, Matthew <laughs> can attest to this. Uh, recently a newspaper com came out about oh, Matthew yeah. and I. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked us about our study habits. And we were like, well, um, well, <laughs> we, we study when we feel the need we have to, and Matthew and I always are texting or calling each other to see like how far behind we are <laughs> to, so, to gouge like with each other. So, so. So yeah. the moral of the story is you better find a good friend when you go to college. <laughs> yes. That can balance yes. you. Would you do anything different? I would. Um, there are a lot of school events that my school hosts, and I wish I would have taken more pride in those events, um, participated more. Not that I don't. I am very involved. I just would have liked to, you know, sport, not be ashamed of our school. Just because we're a health profession school doesn't mean we're any different from any other school. And yeah. So, so the one of the things to remember is that when you go to college, that lesson will serve you well, right? You'll say, okay, I'm gonna get more involved. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? You would change something, Marco. Yeah. <laughs> you would send the text of the billboard to everybody. <laughs> I think I would smile more. And I know that sounds weird, but in the hallways, people think I'm mean or rude <laughs> or just unfriendly. And I hate being unapproachable because I think I'm a nice person and I like to laugh and have a good time. I have the loudest laugh in the room. Um, but yeah, I think as a student, when you're stressed or you have emotions going through your head or it's that Monday morning and you have a morning meeting, you're not gonna have a smile on your face. You're gonna have bags under your eyes and <laughs> early wrinkles, which I'm dreading. But um, yeah, I think I would smile more because I think I would have made a lot more friends in the underclasses. And I think that helps a lot when you're wanting to give advice and share your experience in high school. Well, every time I saw you, you were smiling, Marco. You, you must be a different I person. I smiled for you. <laughs> no, you smiled for me. So, so here's what I would tell you to that, is that uh, it's, it's important because a pleasant person, right? People want to associate with and so forth. Now, are you the type that when you're not smiling and somebody else is laughing and you say, what's so funny and why, why are you so happy, you know? Okay, well, those are lessons learned. Take them to college with you. Anyone else would do anything different? Yes. Um, I said this in my banquet video, but I would tell myself to get off of Netflix and to pick up a book because I got to AP Literature this year and I wish I had read a lot more because you have to read a lot in such a short amount of time and my reading level is kind of a little bit lower, so I wish I had definitely read a lot more. But that's a great lesson to learn For because sure. in college you'll have a lot of reading so yeah. you've already got past that so now you know <laughs> so here's your next question take a moment to think about a specific teacher that inspired you or has truly helped make a difference in your life who would that be I think I can speak for a lot of us when I say that um, a teacher that's made a really big difference in all of our lives is Ms. Raquel Garcia Lasso she's our health science teacher at our or the lead health science teacher at our campus and our host advisor for just about I think all of us um, and she's really made a big impact on our lives. She's been with us since the ninth grade, and she stayed late with us after school to do um, things for HOSA. She supported us when we learned medical terminology in the ninth grade. Um, personally, she's traveled with me all over the country when I have to go to my meetings in Washington, D.C., or in different parts of Texas when we go for conferences and stuff like that. And she's really just made an impact on making sure that we get everything done that we need to and making us better people in this world and teaching us lessons that we otherwise probably wouldn't have learned without her. What a great tribute. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I would say that all of the staff actually at HSHP are great. Um, they're great in helping us with different things. So I just feel like um, I 
Like, I just feel like the staff is amazing all around. I wouldn't be able to specifically choose one teacher because I feel like they all want us to do our best and want us to succeed. So it's hard to just individualize one person. Well, right. great, great. Thank you for sharing that. A teacher that stood out personally for me... It can't be Matthew. He's not a teacher. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> no, no um, one teacher that really stood out to me was our... AP US history teacher, Miss Alexa Higginbotham. And sadly, she's not at our school anymore because Austin snapped her up. <laughs> but, but, um, I, Tell her to that camera, come back. <laughs> <laughs> but I really appreciate everything that she taught us. She didn't just teach us about history, she taught us about what's going on in the world mm -hmm. and what's going on specifically in the Valley. And she wasn't afraid to talk about controversial things with us because she knows that we are a more mature audience and that we could handle talking about things that actually matter. So from all of my history teachers specifically, I felt like she really made it the most impact on me because she related it so much to the world that that's going on now. The current events, yes. yeah. And also she taught me a lot about traveling and how, um, how you should go and experience as much as you can as possible. Um, this past summer, she she took us all on a trip to Europe. Well, some of us, and <laughs> and I had the privilege of being able to go, um, and it was just the most amazing thing to see all the architecture in Italy and France and Monaco, and it was just an amazing trip. And if without her, it wouldn't have been possible. So wow. I really I really owe a lot to her. So tell her come back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else specific? Yes, Matthew. I think I'm going to throw this back a little farther, back to middle school. And this would be uh, Miss Olga de Leon, uh -huh. who was my orchestra director since sixth grade. And I'm just so appreciative of, the, of her being able to see the potential in me as a young child and um, a musical, you know, the, the music that I had in me. And she was not just the person that was there to teach me, but more the person that was there to inspire me. And she was there throughout every time that I cried because I told myself that I couldn't be a musician or every single joy that we had when I won an audition or went to a new place. Uh, she was a person that was cheering me on at Carnegie Hall so many times. And without her, I don't think that I could have had any of the experiences that I would have had because I wouldn't have had the self-confidence to put myself out in the world. And I definitely would have been missing the, the part of me that takes away my stress, that allows me to express myself and the music that is within. Wow, what a great tribute. Thank you for sharing Thank that. You, <laughs> <laughs> and then you can do a shout out at the end to her too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyone else? Anyone else? All right, let's move on to the next question. What's your, and it has to be one, no. What's your favorite memory from high school? What's gonna be something you look back and say? My favorite memory is being able to finally go to our campus in eighth grade from oh. the old oh, you had grade. to bring that up. I, <laughs> yeah. I tried hard to open it the first day. <laughs> but yes, um, I felt a sense of joy walking into those doors uh, the first day we actually got to go there because the campus was so beautiful. I didn't expect it to be as beautiful as it is. And yeah, it was. I'm sure everyone was happy when we finally got there. So you were at the old memorial, and oh, <laughs> but we opened it, right? <laughs> That's a great memory. Anyone else? A memory from high school you're gonna take with you? Take a go. Okay, so this is kind of a collective memory. It's. Um, I think my experience competing in health career display was definitely something that I'll take to college and I'll always remember as being one of the highlights of my high school career because. It's been a journey because I've, I've competed in this with Aaron since 10th grade. And so in a short story, we um, internationals is in Disney World. And so we knew that from the get go. And we were like every single year we were like, this is going to be the year that we go. <laughs> and so the first year we actually we got first at our area competition and we got sixth at state. And so the top three go. And so we were like, we were so close. Right. And so our junior year, I think we were both very stressed out, and we um, we actually didn't even make it to like presentation round and whatnot. Wow. And I know it was it was crazy because we had gone from having this gigantic expectation to not even advancing to like the part or like round two of our competition. And so we went back this year and we got first at area and we got second at state and we'll be going to Disney World later this summer. Mm -hmm. And so it's crazy because this has been like a three year goal that we've set for ourselves. And I've never really seen a goal so like specific, like play out amidst like 
for a four year like time like time span and whatnot. And so I just think it's really a testament to how hard we've worked. And it's crazy because it's just been like a roller coaster <laughs> of emotions. You know, it's you would think that people would give up the second year when you didn't even get to Right. To the level, so but so when do you all go to Disney World? We all want to go, right? Yeah. No, yes, <laughs> we're all going. Okay, everyone. Okay, we had to compete to go. <laughs> all right. Any other specific memory from high school? Um, well, this is the memory that comes to mind. I have had um, a lot of amazing memories, but this is the one that comes to mind. Um, it was the day that Miss Audrey, Miss Garza uh, pulled me into her office and told me that I was valedictorian, Aww. and so so Aww. it was just. <laughs> Hold it was, on, let us. That moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just amazing because what principal will pull you out of class, take you into her office, tell you you're a valedictorian, and then do a little happy dance with you? <laughs> like, it was just amazing seeing how much pride she had in me, and it made, oh. <laughs> made me have so much more pride in myself. Um, she really has set the precedent for us having such a tight-knit environment. Wow. So, so to have that support in her and all of our administration, really, it's just amazing. So, Did, did you do a happy dance, too? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Awesome. Anyone else? Yes, I think Patty. I want to build on to that. Um, no specific, or just a collection of certain memories was just everything that Ms. Garza did for our campus. And when you look past that, that most principals are you know, just holed up in their office somewhere. But Ms. Garza would always make that effort to come out, and we'd have so many uh, dances in our common area. Mm -hmm. uh, she would always be there to celebrate all of our successes. So I think every single one of those moments combined into this collective like aura of a great time that we and had. And the memories that you're going to take. Yes. Um, for awesome. me, it's definitely deciding um, my path. So when I came to the School of Health Professions, I told myself I wanted to do research. And I still do, but I'm so thankful for the opportunities that I've had and the health professionals that I've been able to talk to because they've all given me, given me little pieces of advice that have persuaded me to go into pharmacy. So wow. I wanted nothing to do with pharmacy at the beginning, but thanks to all the people that I've talked to and everybody who's given me a little bit of insight, I've been able to decide that that is what I want to pursue in the future. Super nice, super nice. Anyone else? All right, let's move on to our next question. What advice? Now that you're here, what advice would you give incoming eighth graders or ninth graders to the School of Health Professions? This is your chance. What do you wish you had known at that grade level? Brittany. I would tell a freshman to have patience and confidence in themselves because you're not going to get everything on the first try, and I can attest to that. Um, it was very frustrating not to understand everything on my first go around. And I would tell a freshman to hold on, chill out, it's okay. Like, you're not superwoman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you, you can take the time you need. Everyone learns at a different level, and it's just whatever will help benefit you. So I would say to have patience and hold tight because you can be sitting where I am today. Super nice. Thank you, Matthew. So this is very controversial. But I would say, <laughs> don't worry about your grades so much. I mean, <laughs> do a great job, obviously. Yeah. But the difference between me, Brittany, and Jackie, and I don't is just my you know, tenths of a point. And to really stress yourself out over those little increments when you could be spending time um, engaging in your extracurricular activities and trying to figure out who you are and show that to the colleges instead of, you know, I have this much little more than this person, yeah. is going to be so much more um, self uh, so much more beneficial to your self-worth and as well as to your time management and stress management. Great advice, great advice. I think kind of building off of what Brittany and Matthew have said, I think that you definitely need to have a bit of like confidence in yourself if that is something that you particularly lack. I remember when I came into the ninth grade, I saw all of you guys and I was like immediately <laughs> like, oh my goodness, they're so smart. They're, yes, and like everyone's absolutely amazing. And so I would always, I would always doubt myself and so I think that's something that I definitely struggled with these past four years because I'm like, I'm not going to like be at the place that I want to be. And again, like, I feel like everyone here has had that moment where they don't feel as though they're good enough to not only like sit up here where we are now, but just get to the places in life where they want to be at. And so I think to have that like quiet confidence in yourself is really important because I feel like everyone is worth more than what they initially think that they are. So don't be too hard on yourself, right? right? Don't be too hard awesome, on yourself. awesome. Yeah. Everyone's Similarly great. to Jackie, um, definitely believing in yourself. Um, through like out all of my high school experience, whether it was like running to be an officer or now you know going to internationals or even just going to college and applying, 
it, I've always told myself to expect the worst. You know, mm -hmm. you don't go and expecting something that's gonna be like mm -hmm. great because if you get disappointed, it's going to feel terrible. Yeah. So if you go in expecting the worst, well then you're fine if it doesn't go your <laughs> way. <laughs> but you know, that was definitely something that took, like, was hard when applying to like college and I, you know, I ended up applying to Ivy Leagues and it was something that when I did it, I was like, well, I'm not gonna get in, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Why not just do it because, you know, for fun. Um, and I did, and that was a pleasant surprise, but had I gone in more confident and telling myself that I could do it, I think it would have been that much greater of a reward having come out at the end. Wow, so self-talk is good. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I would tell an incoming freshman not to compare themselves to anyone else because it's always uh, detracting from your own self-confidence if you say, well, why can this person do this, but I can't? So um, that also plays a big part in your study habits. So if you don't understand something, um, you should make sure you understand it by asking other students or uh, asking a teacher to help clarify something for you. Great advice, great advice. Anyone else, Marco? I would Smile say more, to, we know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to an incoming freshman to not be discouraged if things don't go your way or that you don't meet your own expectations. And I can uh, speak from personal experience my sophomore year when I didn't make the top 10 group. But from that, I learned another lesson, which is to recognize your own faults. And I recognized my own fault at that time is that I didn't try as hard as I could because I wanted to be more social and have more friends. And then that backfired because I didn't make um, the goal I wanted for that year. But from, then, from there, I learned to persevere. And if you really want your goals, you're the only one in charge of that can handle that. And turn a locus of control if you take Sharp's class. <laughs> um, but yeah, I persevered and I knew what I wanted to reach and I reached it and I jumped up all these spots. So I'm back. I'm back. I'm yeah, back. Super <laughs> nice. Super nice. Now you can smile. <laughs> now you can smile, right? <laughs> so anyone else? Yes. I would say take every opportunity you can and step outside your comfort zone. I know recently me and Jackie, we competed in a financial literacy competition and like money and bake, banking is right. not our specialty. <laughs> we didn't know anything about it, but it ended up being a really rewarding experience. So stepping outside of your comfort zone is something I would really suggest doing because you don't know what the outcome will be. So take a, take a chance, right? right? Take, mm -hmm. the, take the risk, super nice. So this may be hard for some of you, but just think about this. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? So jump 10 years from now. How old are you, Matthew? 18. 18, so 28. <laughs> so 27, 28, where do you see yourself and what do you see yourself doing in 10 years? I hopefully am still alive. But <laughs> <laughs> we all hope that too. <laughs> um, but hopefully I'm finishing up my um, medical school uh, and moving on into residency or Hopefully something in the medical field because I do see myself I do see myself helping people in the future and that's something I'm really passionate about. So So you see yourself in that space, yes. ten years. Super nice. Ten years. Aggie, where are you gonna I'll be? In ten years, I'll still be in school because I want to go to get my bachelor's and then go get a farm D and then I still want to get my master's so that I can pursue <laughs> research. So I'll definitely still be in that path. So you're ready yes. for that long journey. Yes, I Super nice. Yeah. Ten years. Brittany? I, in 10 years, I'll, I see myself still learning. I'll be, I'll be done with medical school and I'll be in my residency. I want to be an OBGYN, so, so I'll be learning a lot, hopefully still loving what I got myself into <laughs> after all those years of schooling. And, but yeah, I see myself still learning and wanting to, wanting to experience as much as I can to make myself the best doctor that I can be. Super nice. Huh? Where do you see yourself in um, 10 years? Well, my next eight years are already planned out for me. Um, I'll be in Rhode Island for the next eight years. Um, and in 10, hopefully I'll have left Rhode Island. Um, and be like Brittany, continuing my residency to hopefully become a surgeon. Awesome, awesome. So I know I attend the Harlington School of Health Professions, but I do think that these past four years, they've given me so many important skills, like communicating and again, like friendship and whatnot and building everyone up. But I do think that in 10 years, I see myself fulfilling a position in which I'm really able to exercise my creativity. Again, as I said, I was in like, or I've been competing in an event in which requires us to be very creative. And I'm also interested in things such as writing. I'm majoring in that. And I'm also doing a lot of audio and video work on the side as well. And so I think hopefully in 10 years, I'll still be able to 
use my like um, creativity for good as well. And so <laughs> I just hope that I'll get a job one day that I can really use that and use that to spread important and uplifting messages to others. So super nice, awesome. I think I want to build onto Jackie's idea of, you know, not necessarily just medical all the way. And I think keeping myself open for the next 10 years is definitely a thing. I want to be a surgeon, but ultimately I just want to be happy. And if that's not the path that's going to lead me to the most happiness, well, I'm happy now, but <laughs> still, happy. still happy. Yes, mom, he's happy. <laughs> but whether that be uh, medicine or music or advocacy or whatever it happens to be, I'm really looking forward to figuring that out in college, but ultimately just maintaining a happy life. So, so in the 10 years, finding your true passion, yes. wherever, whatever that may be, super nice. Anyone else? Uh, Smiling more. <laughs> in ten years, I believe I'll be in my second year of residency, and I'll be pursuing a career in internal medicine. And in ten years, I also hope I'll be going to the gym, <laughs> eating healthy, and living a happy and healthy lifestyle. And I know it'll be tough in college and medical school to to do that, especially in high school. We we can barely even handle it. But hopefully by then I'll be more disciplined. All right. Anyone else? Ten years. Nobody said they'd be married or you know, oh. nothing. No, forget it. Right? <laughs> it's a distraction. No? So, all right, so we're down to our last question. And so we'll answer it in order. And so, um, so here it goes. Now I will give each of you an opportunity to give a shout out and thank someone uh, for his or her contribution to your success. So we'll start with Brittany. I'd like to thank my parents and my little brother Ryan, they have been such an amazing support group and I thank God every day that I have them. I'd also like to thank my two closest friends, Constanza and Christine, because they've been with me since middle school. They know all my faults, so if they ever tell anyone anything, I have to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they've been with me through it all and they're still with me, so thank you so much. And lastly, I'd like to thank all of my fellow top 10 students because without them I wouldn't be standing where I am today. I really appreciate each and every one of them and I can't wait to see where they end up in life. Super nice. Oh, I don't know if I can top that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you better so, thank her. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, so I think first of all I am most thankful for my parents for all of the amazing work that they've done to support me in all of my journeys and to be there for me in happiness and uh, when things didn't go the way that I planned. And second of all, I think I'd like to thank some of the people that have led me to have the experiences that I never believed. So Jackie and Mike Bezos from the Bezos Family Foundation, uh, the whole team from NYO, Doug, Sarah, Vincent, Siobhan, Amy, thank you so much for seeing the potential in a kid from a small town and for giving me the opportunity to go and see so many amazing things and to do things that I never imagined that I could. And again, all of the people that are here next to me, I am so proud of all of you and I can't wait to see where you're all going to be in 10 years. And hopefully we all complete our goals. And thank you for making high school something that will stay with me forever. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, we're just topping each other. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank my mom, my little brother, Joaquin, and my dad for being my number one supporters in all of my academics. You guys have seen me at my worst. I've come home and I've stressed out and you guys are always so supportive and you're reassuring to me that everything is going to be okay and that everything will work out according to God's plan. And I'd also like to thank specific St. Anthony girls for being um, my absolute <laughs> best friends in these past um, like eight to 10 years of life. We've been with each other for a long time and we all go to different high schools and whatnot, but we have managed to stay the closest of friends and so I'm really appreciative of that. And again, I would like to thank all of the amazing top 10 people. Again, we build each other up so much and we really support one another and I'm very excited to see all of the successes that you guys have in the future. Super nice. I'd like to thank my family, my mom, my dad, and my sister for everything they've done for me and all the support they've had, like Jackie, you know, coming home stressed, crying because of everything that's going on, but still being there to help me and push me. Um, Ms. Garza and all the staff at the Harlingen School of Health Professions for always being there for us, staying after school with us, and doing everything they needed to ensure we succeeded. And also to Morgan. Um, we've known each other since kindergarten, so we're 
14, 15 years now. Yeah. It's been a really long time that we've been really good friends and we've been best friends since. And just always being there and supporting me and being there for me when I needed to. Mm -hmm. And reiterating, I mean, everybody here. I mean, we've grown into a family and I don't think we're going to lose that touch that we've had and we'll stay together and stay co in contact for the next 10 years. <laughs> Great, Aaron, great. Oh, my goodness, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my parents and my two older sisters. Thank you for always being my biggest supporters and also my biggest inspirations. Thank you for always teaching me to go the extra mile and teaching me that enough is never enough to have more confidence in myself. I'd like to thank Ms. Garcia Lasso for helping, for nurturing us and helping us grow and making us into the individuals that we are today. And I'd like to thank Aaron for being my best friend for 14 years and for always being there for me through thick and thin. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. Oh, no. a lot. <laughs> and I wish you the best of luck in Rhode Island. <laughs> you know where he's going to be eight years, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Great job. Oh, I'm going to cry. Okay. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to thank my parents, of course, for always being there for me, whether it's um, high school drama, what to wear the <laughs> next day, stressing over my grades, just overall being there to push me to always um, give my best to everything. I would like to thank Ms. Garza, Ms. Garza Lasso, Ms. Alonso, and all of the staff at HCHP for always being um, so caring towards um, the student and pushing us to always um, go the extra mile, like Morgan said. Um, and I'd like to thank you guys for always just being there and pushing each other to um, be successful. Great job. I would like to thank my family above all, my mom, my dad, and my little sister, who has been so very annoying to me these past <laughs> four years. But um, I'd like to thank her because um, every event that I'm at or that I have to be at, she's there. And I know that she's also in middle school and she has her own things to do. And I appreciate her, my, my mom and my father. And I also like to thank God above all. And of course, our wonderful administration for being there every step of the way for us and putting in all their effort towards our education and towards our happiness as well and our future goals. And I would like to thank uh, my two best friends up here, Therese and Montreal, for sticking by me. And we've pushed each other all the way here for the past four years and I could, couldn't be more happier to be their friend. Awesome. Okay, so the two most influential people that I want to thank are my parents. Um, Mahal Kita, I am so proud to make you proud. Um, I'm cry. <laughs> um, I know that I'm a hard child to uh, teach, but um, all these years that you've supported me, I have never um, been ungrateful. And I also want to thank uh, my teachers, the staff at our school. I'm so thankful for your support. And to my sister, um, I am her first example as a sister and as a student. And I want to thank her for always pushing me, encouraging me, even though she's my little sister. And I want to thank everyone in this room um, with me sitting up here. Um, you guys have been my biggest inspirations. Great thank job, you. great job. I'd like to thank my parents, of course, and my sister. Um, my parents especially for giving me a place to live, uh, for feeding me. <laughs> <laughs> um, also for grounding me, um, not letting me go out, because without that discipline, I would not have been sitting where I am right now. Um, I'd also like to thank all of you up here for inspiring me to uh, give my best and uh, to push even harder and to uh, reach my goals because um, all of you I know are going to do well in life. You all have big goals for yourselves. Um, I'd also like to thank Ms. Garza, of course, all the staff at HSHP, Marco, Therese. Um, thank you for all of the wonderful memories that you've given me, and I'm going to miss all of you. Awesome. Um, so first, I would like to thank my parents for always um, giving, taking me everywhere I needed to go, even though I had a super busy schedule. Not only me, my sister as well, and my little brother. And they've always pushed me to do the best that I can. And they've rewarded me when I do good, so that's been a little bit of a push up there. And I'd also like to thank my sister, my twin sister, for always being one of my biggest competition, you know, always <laughs> wanting to one up each other. So I know that's definitely put us both where we are today. Then my little brother for always, even though he bugs me, you know, um, he's always really considerate. You know, when I'm trying to do homework, he won't play his music loud. 
and just thank you for always doing that for me. And then I'd also like to thank my best friend, Allison. She's been my best friend since the seventh grade, and we've done everything together, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it in college without her, but I know we'll always be best friends. And I also wanna thank all of the staff at HSHP, you know, Ms. Garza for always making everything possible and making everything that we wanted. Um, Mr. Gonzalez for helping me also find my way to pharmacy. Ms. Garza also for always um, doing everything that she can for us. And I'd also like to thank all of you, you know, for telling me due dates and helping me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wanna take a moment to thank each and every one of you for being amazing and for the work that you did to advance your name advance the HSHP name uh, and the Harrington School District name. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that you all are going to be extremely successful. Uh, all I ask is that you remember those that have helped you along the way, uh, approach life with a sense of gratitude, uh, do some amazing things, solve the problems we haven't been able to solve. We have the highest hopes for you. You are the hope uh, for the future. And so thank you for choosing us. Uh, and as you thanked everyone else, thank you for being grateful to your parents and to those that have supported you. And it warms my heart to see that you all are just like a family. And so you all are amazing, and we look forward to reading about your future successes and, and all the great things you're going to do in this world. So thank you for being part of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>